I'm heading to New Zealand later this week and I wanted to share with all of you guys what I'm bringing, why and how I pack everything together. We'll be hunting the southern island of New Zealand and the target will be to hunt for Chami and Tawar. We will backpack in on Tar country, hunt there for three or four days and then probably get back to camp, relocate and maybe get dropped off by a helicopter for three or four days to hunt Samoa. It's going to be a mountain hunt, so weather is going to be unpredictable, but the temperature range that we are expecting is going to be 10-15 degrees during the day and down to minus 10 degrees during the night. So let's get to the gear. What I will be bringing on the first day of the hunt. Peloton briefs as an underwear regarding the base layer. I have chose Merino. The antibacterial properties of Merino are unbeatable and we are planning to be hunting for three, four, five days in a row. I'm choo choosing the 145 thip and 145 thip of bottoms. Regarding outer layer, I will be using the Chinook pant combined with the Merino thip of bottoms. On top of my base layer, mid layer, I will be taking the Peloton 240. By construction, it's wind resistant but it doesn't have any membrane. So it's gonna be a layer that is gonna be super breathable, but at the same time protect you for the wind. And this is always my first choice when you have to hike and when we are, we're with our packs and we need to be active and moving and gaining a lot of altitude, that's always my choice. Regarding boots, I'm taking the Scarpa Rebel K. The reason of going with a semi-rigid boot is that it provides a stiffness. So when you are in really steep and technical terrain, it will give you extra support and the boot will not be flexing at every step. So you can put the tips and hike with less energy. Two pair of socks. I really like using always two socks. One very thin as a base layer and, a, and another one mid as an outer layer. I have never got any blisters using two socks. Yukon Gators, a must. Super breathable membrane, but completely waterproof. So it takes all the moisture from the grass. It will allow you to cross a river, walk in the snow. So must on these kind of hunts. Kuyu cap, a Rinon neck gator as glove systems. I will be taking the tight gloves and also some Peloton 200 gloves that, that I have cut the fingers to be able to shoot with my bow with a handheld release. And I have also separated my quiver adapter for the belt from Total Pip, a Leatherman multi-tool that I will bring always with my Kuyu climbing belt. Finally, with me that day, I will be taking the Bino harness with the optics and also with the rangefinder on. Everything has already been separated and I will be packing all the gear and clothing on the bow case, that way the bow case arrives, I will have enough gear to be able to jump and, and hunt. And if the bow case doesn't arrive, I wouldn't have the bow either. So I will not be able to hunt anyways. The optics is the only thing that I would be carrying on my hand luggage because it's a very expensive part of the equipment and heavy. So that way I remove some of the weight from the backpacks. New Zealand, it's very important that you clean properly the boots. There is in customs control an agricultural inspection and they check for any basic plants, so it's very important to declare them in customs, to bring them separated and be sure to have them properly cleaned before arriving to New Zealand. Second part, what I will be taking on my backpack for this hunt. First of all, I have chosen the Icon Pro 5200. I think it has the perfect volume for this kind of hunt that we'll be hunting three, four, five days with all our gear on. So there will be plenty of room for everything. Regarding clothing for this hunt, as an outer layer, typically I will have chosen the guide jacket but lately, especially for bow hunting, I'm a huge fan of the Kenai jacket. It was born as an active insulation layer, so it's pretty warm, super quiet since it doesn't have any coating because it's meant to maximize breathability. The downside of this is that against wind and against water, it doesn't have any kind of membrane or layer. So I typically combine it with the Ultra NX rain gear. This is a waterproof membrane, very thin, pretty quiet for a three layer rain gear and ultra light. So I combine these two and still the two pieces are lighter than the guide jacket and I think it gives me a wider range of weather conditions in the mountains. As an insulation, I, I have the Kenai but I will also, since it can be pretty cold at night, I really like the Super Down and I will be taking the Super Down Pro because it might be super cold during the night. I don't like being cold in camp or even hiking and glassing. So I will be bringing that piece and always with me also the Super Down Ultra 
pad will bring this pad inside one of our dry bags to be sure that no matter what happens the pads will stay dry. As rain gear I will be using the Shugats rain gear both jacket and pants. I really that's my number one choice from all mountain hands. Now that we have the clothing cover as an accessories headwear I will be bringing the peloton 240 beanie and also a couple of peloton neck gaiters. The expedition gloves those gloves are waterproof and also have some insulation on the inside those will go all the time on the backpack. For the camp in terms of extra clothing what I will be bringing will be an extra pair of socks, a thin and a mid socks just in case I get wet boots. I will bring an extra brief underwear and an extra merino 145. Also a little very light towel and for sleeping to be able to change during the night and feel more comfortable. A pyjama and also some compression socks to be able to put on my feet and I really like how your feet uh, recover during the night. A couple of slippers for the night for the camp, not much volume but it will allow you during the dinner to relax your feet and be more comfortable. We will be also bringing our packs, all the sleeping system and we will be using the Storm Star or the Mount Star. Both options are great for this time of the year. The Mount Star is a little bit lighter so it's gonna be nicer. Thermal Rest, Neo Air as a mattress, a little pillow from Summit and the sleeping bag, the one that we have for the coldest weather, 0 degrees Fahrenheit minus 18 degrees Celsius. I always bring the sleeping bag on my pack inside of one of our dry bags that it serves for two purposes. It allows to keep the sleeping bag dry and it will also take all the air from the sleeping bag to be able to compress it as much as possible. Because you can basically compress your sleeping bag with this. Another thing to take on our bag will be the cooking station. This one is the one I have from Jetball also a cup and a fork and spoon. Regarding the pack, also super important to don't forget a rain cover for the pack. You need to be sure that what you bring in there doesn't get wet. Also an Algen water bottle and also a platypus bottle that is super compressible but in case you if we camp far away from a water stream it will be nice to get a couple of liters inside the backpack. And also this is a Catalin bottle B3 which is very light but it also has a filter so depending on where we get water. Couple of knives, one for skinning and one for cutting, a sharpener, a little piece of rope, a lighter and the inReach. Regarding the Garmin inReach, I think this is a must for any of you guys heading to a mountain hunt where you're gonna be spending a bunch of days with no self reception and everything because, because it serves for two purposes. One, it's a GPS so it will allow you to know where you are to mark points to be able to return. It's also like a safety device because by satellite it will allow you to send messages to your family so every night you can connect with your family and tell them that everything is okay and with that message your coordinates will be included, your relatives will know where you are exactly and you also have an SOS button that will send a preset message for rescue. And the difference with any other rescue devices that may be out there is that you can talk with the safety people to be able to let them know what's your situation. So be sure to have one of these. I also have a global rescue plan just in case something happens. Two headlamps with new batteries on and also a cap lamp. It's super light and it's nicer when you are having dinner several people to have a light just not the headlamp. Game bags and a couple of other bags to organize all our gear. I typically take for these hands an s to buy trekking pole ice axe. I think it's same weight when you get used to hiking with it. It's as comfortable as a stick but it allows you to do more things like flattening the ground of your camp, grabbing two things. It can be also used as an ice axe and I also put a bunch of duct tape around it and finally my emergency kit with all the medicines inside that I will take on the backpack. All the pills will be stayed in camp and I will take a smaller kit uh, with me which will be like the first aid emergency kit. Optics, I will be taking the Svaro ATX and also a Bangwar tripod which is like 1.7 kilos and also for glassing, the glassing pad from 
from Cuyo. As bow equipment, I'm bringing always an extra release, a set of Allen wrenches and a few packages of extra broadheads. And now that I have the pack full with everything that I will be needing, I will be putting the whole pack inside the Taku 5500. That way everything is protected. Bow equipment. I always bring two bows. These are hands with very limited time and if something happens to one bow, you are very unlikely to be able to repair it in the field, no matter if you bring extra strings, bow press and all that, and you, you're gonna lose a lot of time. So I better have an extra bow that I can switch straight to that bow and be hunting in, in a few hours and don't lose time. An important thing is that both bows basically have the same kind of setup. They have the same sight, the same arrows, same releases, they are both set up. So in case one side breaks, I have an extra side on the other ball. So I have basically an extra replacement of every single part of equipment. What I will be taking on this trip will be, this is the PSC Expedite. This is, will be my first bow, And I have that one with the stabilizing system. That's the only thing I will not be bringing on the second bow because you can still hunt without a stabilizing system. Regarding arrows, I will be bringing 18 arrows, uh, 7 will go on my quiver and I will be probably taking up there another 6 arrows on this tube all the time on my backpack just in case because it has already happened to me before dropping and breaking a whole quiver of arrows so in the mountains you always want to have a, a backup with this system that Carbon Spring came out with you can put them here and the veins of all the arrows will be free and will not be damaged seeing each other. So we'll be taking the bows, the arrows and also toolkit. I'm taking part of my toolkit. It's basically some equipment to repair any kind of arrow. I'm taking a lighter, a third release aid, a couple of batteries for the rangefinder. That's very important. Torch loop, tape, glue. Allen keys also like pliers for the loop, that way in case of the temperature changes you can rotate the loop and be sure that the pip is aligned properly. Tape, uh, some leveling, leveling tools, an extra pair of little bolts and things that may help fix the sight or the rest. Also, I will be taking a bunch of broadheads. This repair kit will stay in camp. I will put it on the bottom of the bow case. This is a double bow case, but it still is from SKB. And still it's a little bit narrow, so it's important that you remove things like the side mount, the stabilizer system, the side bar, and everything to be sure that you can put the two bows without damaging each other. And I will be also, as mentioned before, putting all the gear that I'm gonna be wearing on the first day, I will put it in, in between the bows to be able to, to assure that they are not hitting each other and that all the load is safe and secure and not moving around during the plane. And now you close the back and that's it. No, just in case, oh, maybe I need this. I'm gonna put this also, forget it. You don't need anything else. So close it and forget about it. Thanks for watching guys.